Hey dudes, it's Anna. I have just found a uh, rather worn out, but still relatively good shape, uh, chanterelle mushroom. If you are unfamiliar with wild mushroom hunting and you're just getting started, uh, the chanterelle is probably a really good place to start. Uh, chanterelle is actually a part of a large genus called Cantharellus. We have a lot of different varieties of them and it's uh, oftentimes very difficult to tell them apart uh, in the field. So. I just uh, stick with calling them chanterelles, take them home, and try to distinguish between them before I put them in my belly. Um, but they do all share some common characteristics. They are pretty easy to identify um, and don't look like a lot of other mushrooms. So uh, to begin with, they are uh, oftentimes a sort of flowery shape, especially as they mature. They have decurrent uh, false gills, and decurrent means that they run, run down the stem. And the gills are not real gills, they're um, you know just more like wrinkles. Uh, you can see that they're a little bit forked, they come off and you can rub them off relatively easily. So um, you know, unlike a lot of mushrooms where if you um, handle their gills you can break them, they're blade-like, they're deep. Uh, chanterelles, they're just again sort of the surface level wrinkliness. Uh, but that is where uh, the spores come from. The other thing that's really distinctive about chanterelles, and is probably, uh, for me, like the fastest way to determine between a chanterelle and something else, say a jack-o'-lantern mushroom or another mushroom that uh, is sort of orangey and has decurrent gills, is the uh, color of the flesh. <clears throat> so even though most chanterelles come in this sort of like anywhere from orangey to a pinky uh, sort of peach color, uh, the flesh itself is white. So if you open the mushroom up, you'll see that it's kind of this off-white color. It also uh, strips apart a lot like uh, string cheese does. So it's kind of firm, um, a little bit stringy without being fibrous. And so that's a, a really good distinguishing characteristic. You can see this one's got a little bit of um, worm damage on the inside, but uh, nonetheless, it still very much has that feature. Uh, they're pretty, you know, uh, resilient. You get a lot of water that you can squeeze out of them very frequently. Also, I love this one in particular because chanterelles, because they grow in a sort of like indeterminate way and they're a little bit random and a little bit flowery, you sometimes get these like weird sections of them uh, that have um, more distinct uh, sort of wrinkliness or almost they look more uh, like mutants <laughs> uh, than other mushrooms do. So I'm a big fan of this particular like waffly wavy section that was, uh, you know, the cap was curved very much over it. So this is a mushroom that's probably toward its maturity. Um, I'm going to kill a baby here, so please don't uh, alert the authorities, but this is a, a small version of the same thing. Uh, so, you know, before they do mature, they have a sort of like a little more classic cap and stem mushroom thing going on with them. But if you flip them over, um, you know, again, you'll see those wrinkly decurrent false gills. Um, it is worth noting that uh, some of the North Carolina chanterelles, the false gills, look kind of deep and kind of blade-like. So if you go to Whole Foods and you pick up uh, some chanterelle mushrooms, God help you, for like $45 a pound and they came from the Pacific Northwest, they'll have these big, like, they, they look, you know, kind of Lovecraftian. They have these really big wrinkly gills. It's very distinct. But for us, sometimes, you know, the North Carolina chanterelles is really kind of um, narrowly spaced gills. They don't look super wrinkly. So again, you know, if you're in doubt, um, opening the mushroom up and looking for that white flesh is a, a real good clue. Um, on the subject of expensive mushrooms and uh, their culinary uses, chanterelles are really delightful. Some of them are very fragrant and fruity. Regardless of um, you know which species they are, I highly recommend um, you know parboiling them or uh, putting them in a dry pan to do a dry saute. Reason being that they retain a tremendous amount of surface water. So um, essentially, if you were to throw a chanterelle in a pan with hot oil, you would get a hot oily slug thing. Now that might be a kind of tasty hot oily slug thing, but one of the great things about mushrooms is they're sort of you know meaty. Um, consistency. And so in order to avoid the slugginess and get to that meaty consistency you want, you want to draw the surface level water out of the chanterelles. So that means throwing it in a pan, you'll um, notice that, you know, the mushrooms will sort of hang out and simmer for a minute or so, and then they'll drop just a tremendous amount of water. It's really kind of cool. It also often smells very fragrant and aromatic. That fragrance is fruity, kind of in the apricot neighborhood. 
Um, I personally have taken to parboiling, parboiling them and then roasting them because I can use them in kind of anything once they have this nice uh, meaty consistency. I'm not much of a cook, however, so there are probably people who think that what I'm telling you is sacrilege. So I'm gonna um, keep further tips to myself, but certainly this is a mushroom that you can find uh, throughout the course of the summer in North Carolina, really abundant and also um, growing in association with, uh, you know, oak trees, especially young, medium age oak trees. And so uh, they're very, very common. They come back in the same spot year after year. So once you have a chanterelle patch or two, you should probably be able to eat off of it for uh, as many years as those trees are around.